Okay. So. Yeah, it's cold out today. I had to warm my car up because all the frost. All right, we got to finish chapter 11 today. So let's recap what we read in chapter 11 yesterday. We are on page 120, in case you're curious. But um, remember, he just woke up. I remember he, you know, stole Mr. Um, What's-His-Face's car. And then, you know, we found out that he's just like basically a mailman, but for blood. And then uh, he fell asleep. And then he ended up at Miss Sleet's house, which is Lefty Lewis's daughter's house. And he was pretending to be asleep when Lefty Lewis and Mrs. Sleet were talking about stuff. And then um, they were talking about how he's got like a peanut shaped head and how he's so skinny and all that. But Lefty Lewis is literally joking up a storm. And remember, he's about to have a nice big breakfast. And that's pretty much where we stopped. So top of 120, I said, no, sir. Oh, wait, wait. No, wait, wait. maybe we are on 121. Yeah, we were on 121. I lied. They already introduced themselves. She was like, oh, I'm going to get you some clothes, you know, yada, yada, yada. So, 121. After I got out of the bathroom, I saw that Mrs. Slee had put some clean clothes on the bed. My old clothes were gone, all except my drawers, which I hadn't taken off. She'd even put clean drawers out for me, so when I put them on, I stuck my old ones down in the pocket of my new pants. I could ditch them when I got to Grand Rapids. It's too embarrassing to have strangers look at your dirty drawers, even if the stranger is as nice as Mrs. Sleep. So when he's talking about his drawers, he's talking about his underwear is what he's talking about, in case you were wondering. Man, my first pair of trousers. Trousers are long pants. Back in the day, kids always wore the, the knicker things and their pants, but they go like underneath the knee. And that is what like young boys used to wear all the time. But now he's got full length pants. He's saying his first pair of trousers. Oh my goodness, how exciting. Trousers is another word for pants. My new clothes were just a little bit too big, but they were long pants and not knickers, so I didn't care. I rolled cuffs into the pants and sleeves, and they fit pretty doggone good. Oh, wait, then it was my first pair of trousers. I actually skipped a paragraph. Oh, my goodness. I let my nose lead me down to the smell of pancakes and toast was coming from. The sleets had a room for eating, and it was had a great big table right in the middle of it. The first thing I noticed was a huge pile of pancakes sitting on a blue and white plate on top of the table. Lefty Lewis was sitting with Miss Sleet's kids. The little girl had a big smile, and the boy was looking at me kind of hard. It wasn't one of those put up your dukes looks. It was just one of those dog gives another dog that might be passing through his neighborhood. Lefty Lewis said, but... These two worrisome midgets are my favorite grandkids. Kim is my favorite granddaughter, and Scott is my favorite grandson. Of course, they're my only grandkids. So in fairness, you'd have to say they're also my least favorite grandkids. So once again, Lefty Lewis is like, oh, my favorite grandkids. Also my least favorite, because they're his only ones. These two kids had had a lot of practice being around their teasing old granddad because they didn't pay him no mind at all. I said, hi, my name is Bud, not Buddy. The little girl said, that's a strange name, but not Bud. Was exact, I could tell that was exactly what she was doing. Lefty Lewis laughed and said, that's my girl. Then he went into the kitchen. Scott looked up to make sure the grown folks weren't around and said, you really want him away from home? I had to stop and think. It's one thing to lie to grown-ups, but... That's one thing to lie to grown-ups. Most time, adults want to hear something that lets them take their attention off of you and put on something else. That makes it easy and not too bad to lie to them. You're really just giving them what they want. It's different when you lie to another kid. Most times, kids really do want to know what they're asking you. I guess I've been thinking too long because he said, you run all the way from Grand Rapids to Owasa because is it because your daddy used to beat you? I could answer that with the swear for God truth. Shucks, my daddy never laid a hand on me in his life. Then how come you run? I didn't like where I was. That wasn't a lie. Well, if you're lying about your daddy beating you, you can scream right after breakfast because my gramps is taking, you can scram right after breakfast because my gramps is taking you straight back home. My daddy never laid a hand on me. And he's not lying, obviously, because he's never met his dad. So obviously his dad has never heard him. The girl said, Scott, you talk too much. Let him sit down. 
Then she told me, Mom is going to bring the sausages in a minute. You like sausages? Uh-huh. I'd never had sausages before, but if that was what was making the house smell so good, I was going to love it. So remember, when it was just him and his mom, they obviously didn't have a lot of money when he was in the home and in all his foster homes. Like where he was, there just wasn't a lot of money. So he's never even had sausage. And this family is going to have a whole plate of it for breakfast. Kim said, good, because my gramps brought them all the way from Grand Rapids. He always brings us good food, and we're going to share it with you because Mama says you're special guest, and we have to treat you nice. Am I being nice so far? Good. I'll make a deal with you. Uh-oh. What kind of deal? I'll sing a song that I made up all by myself when I'm done. I get to ask you one question, and you have to answer, and cross your heart, you'll tell the truth. This didn't sound too bad. Okay, here it goes. It took me a very long time to make this song up, so I hope you like it. The boy said, oh, brother. Kim says, mommy says, no. Mommy says, no. I listen, you don't. Wah, ha, ha. The building falls down. The building falls down. You get crushed. I don't. Wah, ha, ha. Boy, that was the worst song I'd ever heard. Kim stood up and bowed like a princess. I clapped my hands together, kind of soft under the table. She said, thank you very much. Scott just shook his head. Kim said, okay, that's my part of the deal. Now you've got to keep your part and answer the question I ask. Okay. Now you can tell me about your, now, can you tell me about how your mother died? Scott's foot kicked her under the table. I said, who told you my mother died? The little girl said, oops, and stuffed something from her hand into her mouth. My mama got sick. She died real fast. She didn't feel no pain or no suffering. Kim said, I hope my mother never dies. Scott said, stupid, everybody's got to die. Kim said, oh, I'm telling mama you called me stupid. He said, you do, and I'll tell her you got one of those pancakes in the pocket of your dress. She shut right up. Okay, so I just think that these Miss Scott, Mr. Scott and Kim are just like a regular old siblings like bickering back and forth with each other. I told her, he's right, everybody's got to die. It's not sad unless you do it real slow and suffer. My mama died so quick and painless, she didn't even have time to close her eyes. She didn't have time to make a face like she was hurting. Both... Lefty Lewis's grandkids got real surprised at that news. Mrs. Sleek came into the room with another blue plate covered with little round pieces of meat. Those had to be the sausages. She saw the way the kids were looking at me with their mouths half open and said, Now you two aren't talking Bud's ear off, are you? Scott said, No, Mama, I'm not. But Kim's coming real close to it. Kim said, I was not. I was just making pleasant conversation. Miss Sleet laughed and set the plate on the table right in front of me. Lefty Lewis came out with a big glass jug filled with orange juice and sat down next to me. Miss Sleet sat down and said, Scott and Kim, would you like to say, would, bleh, would you say the grace, please? Everyone ducked their heads down and the two kids said, God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. Amen. Then people started passing the big blue plates around and stabbing toast and pancakes and sausages with their forks. I watched to see how much everyone took and tried to take the same. Then I started to watch how much food the two kids put on their fork every time so I wouldn't look like a pig. Lefty Lewis noticed I was taking a long time and told his daughter, see what I told you, Nina? Poor Bud, not Buddy, so skinny and his stomach is shrunk down so much that just smelling the food has got this boy full. Oh, well, I guess that just means more food for the rest of us. Everyone except for me and Miss Sleet yelled a big cheer. Eating with the Sleets and Lefty Lewis was really hard to do because they had bad table manners. They didn't, not because they had bad table manners or nothing, but because they talked through the whole breakfast and they kept trying to get me to talk too. At the home, after Grace was said, we weren't allowed to say boo. Eating and being quiet is a hard habit to break. Okay, so just like, remember, at the mission, they were also really quiet when they were talking or when they were eating. And he said at the home, after they pr say a prayer, like, you know, um, say grace, whatever you want to call it, then everyone's really quiet. But here, you know, they're a family. They're having a grand old time. They're eating breakfast. You know, they're just talking it up. Me and my husband talk a lot when we have supper or whatever meal together. I don't know how your family is, but I definitely talk during my meals. Eating and being quiet is a hard habit to break. Every time one of those seats would talk to me and look at me like they expected an answer, I'd look around first to make sure no one was watching. At the home, if you got talk, got caught talking during mealtime, you'd have to get up and leave your food. If those sleets had to live under those rules, they'd all starve to death. They talked after every swallow. They talked after every drink they took. They talked while they were wiping off their lips. 
Shucks, the little girl Kim talked with milk running down her throat. Some of the time, her words got gulped up in what she was swallowing, and they laughed. Man, did they laugh. It was hard to tell whose story they were laughing at. They were doing so much chattering. Lefty Lewis was talking about radio shows, and Scott was talking about about going to a baseball game to watch Lefty Lewis pitch. And Kim was talking about a little girl she didn't like. And Mrs. Sleet was talking about some people called Red Caps. So Bud is literally just like infatuated with what everyone's talking about because everyone is talking, everyone's saying something, and they're talking while eating. And he's just like, you know, he's never had this situation with like, there's like a happy family having breakfast, talking. So he's kind of like just an on. He's kind of just taking it all in. Kim said to my mother, Mommy, can't you tell Bud not Buddy doesn't know what a red cap is? You got to explain better. Miss Sleet said, Oh, sorry, Bud. Red caps are the men who work at the railroad station loading the trains and taping people's bags into their car. That's what Mr. Lewis does. My husband is a Pullman porter. He takes care of the people once you're on the trains. Kim said, Yeah, our dad gets to travel all over the country on trains for free. Scott said, That's because he's working. It's not for free. He gets paid to do it. Lefty Lewis swallowed the big hunk of sausage and said, and you know what, bud? I bet the thing he misses most is Nina's cooking. I can't tell you how proud I am of how far my daughter's cooking has come. This might be hard to believe, but she used to be such a bad cook that her fried chicken was known to have turned the chicken hawk into a vegetarian. Kim, Scott and Kim and Miss Lee started busting a gut. Yep, Lefty Lewis said, I brought a friend to Flint a couple years ago, and even though I warned him, he... Tried to be polite and ate four of her pancakes. Poor soul held his stomach all the way back to Grand Rapids. Said to me, Lefty, I don't mean to show disrespect, but those weren't pancakes your daughter served. They were pancakes. Ah, get it? They hurt his stomach. Miss Sleet laughed along with everyone else and said, well, I'm sure I don't need to hear any more of this. She picked up the empty sausage plate and went into the kitchen. As soon as she got out of the room, Kim whispered, Quick, Grandpa, tell Bud Not Buddy how many times you had to pull the car over when you two were going back to Grand Rapids so the man could get out and vomit on the side of the road. Before Lefty Lewis could answer, Miss Sleet came out of the kitchen with a big wooden spoon and whopped her father a good lick in the head. All right. So that was like the first like family, family, like not super poor starving meal he's had like he got to eat as much food as he want everyone was talking everyone was having a lovely time and we found out what lefty lewis does for a living besides that he does blood from you know one place to another he also works for trains the train stations remember this is 1936 not everyone has cars lots of people travel by train and what he does is like people go to the train and they have luggage and he is in takes care of the luggage and then mrs sleet's husband takes care of the people once they're on the train so that's just extra information about them and the family we are going to stop there because chapter 12 is super long so you already have an assignment on google classroom it's just like the one you did the other day you're going to write me one question and with the answer from chapter 11 it has to be from chapter 11 so you're going to go through chapter 11 what we read yesterday what we read today and you're going to think of one review question it needs to have capital letter and a question mark answer needs to obviously be the correct answer capital letter punctuation mark and that is your assignment for today now tomorrow we will not be having a live reading RTI. Tomorrow, you have a ReadWorks assignment, okay? So no live reading RTI tomorrow. You have a ReadWorks assignment that you have till Monday to get done. But your assignment from today is due by tomorrow at 8.19. But you still have, I mean, we still have about 15, a little less than 15 minutes in reading RTI. So really, you should be able to get the assignment done right now. So you are free to go. The assignment is already posted on Reading RTI. This will be posted for later. I'll see you guys all in reading class or Math RTI. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Bye. See you later.